tonight, who killed Billy Joe? My daughter's fallen or she's got head injuries. There's blood everywhere. What, she's banged her head and bleeding from the head? Yes. Can I take your name, sir? Uh, Sean Jenkins. Jailed for murder, but then acquitted. The thing that shocked me more than anything at the beginning, that anyone would actually think that I was capable of murdering Billy. For the first time, answering claims the jury were not allowed to hear. Do I understand you right in saying that you never hit your ex-wife? Do you recognize that description of yourself? Why do you think the jury still did not believe you? Good evening. It was a crime that shocked us all. A 13-year-old girl battered to death on her doorstep and in broad daylight. But although the murder of Billy Joe Jenkins received huge publicity back in 1997, no one suspected it would still be creating headlines in 2006. It was in February this year that her foster father, Sean Jenkins, was finally acquitted after an earlier guilty verdict, six years in prison and two retrials. But although he was freed, questions have since been raised about his character and his alleged domestic violence. Tonight, in an exclusive interview with this program, he answers those questions for the first time. The victim, a teenage girl with everything to live for. Billy Joe was attacked with a tent spike as she painted a back door, left alone for just 40 minutes as the rest of the family went shopping. Her body the suspect, the foster father, who'd helped to give her a new life, then, according to police, brutally took it away. The facade of respectability, Sean Jenkins, the deputy headmaster, tonight beginning a life sentence for the ferocious murder of his foster daughter. Five weeks ago, former deputy headteacher Sean Jenkins was finally acquitted of Billy Joe's murder. He's become the only defendant in Britain to be cleared after being tried three times for the same crime. Uh, I've always known that I would be acquitted. Um, when uh, I was first uh, sent to prison, um, I had uh, a number uh, of days which were real dark nights of the soul. And I reached my lowest point then. Uh, I lost my faith in God, and I lost my faith in many people. And uh, I wanted to go to sleep and never wake. But I knew that uh, for, for Billy, for myself, uh, for uh, my children, my family, uh, that I would never stop fighting and, uh, until I was acquitted. Billy Jo Jenkins was born in 1983. She was a fun-loving child who wanted to become an actor. She'd come from a broken home and at the age of nine went into foster care. She was taken in by Sean and Lois Jenkins, a couple who already had four daughters of their own. What are your memories of Billy Joe? Well, she was lovely, and uh, we enjoyed every minute that she was with us. Wonderful memories um, of her and of holidays and of things that we've done together, play squash, go running, play tennis. Uh, and, and have enjoyable Christmases with her. So there are many, many happy memories. But on February 15, 1997, Billy Joe was murdered while she was painting patio doors at the family's home in Hastings. Her killer had bludgeoned her to death with a metal tent spike. Despite the massive publicity, police had few leads. In desperation, they asked the foster parents to make a public appeal. Billy Joe was loving and supportive to her four sisters. Shortly after that appeal, Sean Jenkins himself became the key figure in the investigation. When did it become clear to you that you were a suspect? I, I never for a moment said to myself, well, I, I might be a suspect. It, it never actually occurred to me at all. The thing that shocked me more than anything at the beginning that anyone would actually think that I was capable of murdering Billy. 
but the police had their reasons, which they believed were compelling. Microscopic droplets of Billy Joe's blood had been found on his clothes. His accounts of his movements on the day of the murder were inconsistent, and his wife, Lois, had claimed that he was a violent man who had occasionally slapped her and hit their children. On the day of the murder, Sean Jenkins was returning two of his natural daughters, Annie and Lottie, home from a clarinet lesson. Billy Joe had stayed at home, painting the patio doors to earn extra pocket money. According to the police, Jenkins launched a brutal and lethal attack on her while the other two girls were outside. He then got back into the car and took them both to a nearby DIY store. The police say he did that to provide himself with an alibi. He says he did it because his other daughters wanted to join in the painting and he needed to buy the necessary materials. I announced to all of them that we were actually um, going and I didn't actually want to go, but we left um, fairly soon and, uh, and went off to, to get the white spirit. So that's why you decided to go out again? Yes. But in, in, in court, it, it, was, it was suggested that you had some white spirit in the house. Why yeah. did you need to go out again? Well, yes, and uh, um, much was made of that. I mean, I, I, the, the, the white spirit we had was in an old three-year-old bottle, half full, at the back of the cupboard. And firstly, I didn't know it was there. And secondly, even if I had looked in the cupboard, I wouldn't have noticed it. The police were suspicious for other reasons. Firstly, Jenkins hadn't taken any money with him. Secondly, he'd taken an unusual route. On this map of Hastings, this is the family home. This is the do-it-all DIY store, and this is the most direct route between the two. But this is the route Jenkins took, prompting detectives to ask why he'd driven around the park right past his front door. Much was made of the fact that you didn't go directly to the DIY shop. Why such a circuitous route? It wasn't a circuitous route. I couldn't turn around outside my house and go directly to the store because I couldn't do three-point turns in the middle of the road because it was too dangerous. So I had to go around the park. Now, the reason why I went a second time is that I did return home um, uh, en route. I decided it was getting too late um, to, uh, to, to, for, for Annie to start painting again. And uh, she said, well, I, I am very keen to paint. And I'd already promised her that she could. And so I then said, OK, we'll drive there. And so I drove on for, um, uh, for the White Spirit. But it's like many things. Um, it, it is totally innocent. But if you, uh, if you want me to be guilty, if you are looking for a conviction, you can take anything we do in life and put a different slant on it. But it was twisted. And, uh, and it was then presented in, in, in what I believe in, in, in a quite a false light. When you got to the DIY shop, you realized you had no money. I had no money, yes. So it was a pretty fruitless exercise anyway. Well, it was a fruitless exercise. But of course, the, the police said, right. Now, the reason why he went to do it all is because he wanted to provide a, some, a, a, a block of time where another suspect, somebody else, could come along to commit the murder. That's the reason they gave for it. But of course, it's a ludicrous argument. It doesn't hold up at all. You know, if anybody in that situation was designing a trip as a ruse, they would have gone in to do it all. They would have looked around the store for half an hour, for 45 minutes, for an hour even, and then gone back and provided a long period of time. So how long were you away? Because it was during that time, during that period, that Billy Joe was killed. I cannot be sure, you know, to the minute, what it was. Ten minutes was mentioned. Of, 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 of that order, d depending on how fast or slowly one drives, whether one comes to traffic lights. May I suggest to you that, it, that the police 
had problems with your version of events because you were asking them to believe that in that period of time, 10 minutes or so that you were away, a stranger broke into the back of your garden, he found Billy Joe, he found a murder weapon, killed her mm. and escaped with no one noticing a thing. Yes, well, I I've never asked the police to believe anything. Um, I have simply said that we returned from that particular trip and we found Billy. The, 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 the police said to me, so who did this murder? And I, I don't know. I could only tell the police what I knew. And uh, at that time, because of the shock and confusion, I, I was certainly not involved in, 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 in speculating with the police. It was on returning from that unsuccessful shopping trip that the girls found Billy Joe. It was then that an ambulance was called. Thank you. Go ahead, call her. Where do you need the ambulance? Uh, 48 Lower Park Road. Lower Park Road. Lower Park Road, Hastings, and it is an emergency. And what's happened there? I don't... I, I really... I don't know. My daughter's fallen or she's got head injuries. There's blood everywhere. Well, she's banged her head and bleeding from the head? Yes. No, well, I don't, I don't know. She's, there's blood everywhere on her head. She's lying on the floor. And can I take your name, sir? Uh, Sean Jenkins. Jenkins' subsequent behaviour raised further suspicion. While his foster daughter lay in a pool of blood inside, he went outside to raise the roof on his convertible car. Detectives believed that this was part of a well-planned cover story. By getting into the car as the 999 team arrived, he had a perfect explanation for any blood that may have been found there afterwards. Your daughter has been battered to death. Your two other children are distraught, although they're in the company of a neighbour. Mm. And you go and sit in your car? Yes. At a time like this? Yeah, exactly. You, you can't understand it. And now I look back, I, 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 I can think, well, why on earth would I do that? But when I got into the car, at that point I came to, and I realised this is a stupid thing to do. And so I then got out of the car. And I have no answers for it, other than my world fell apart. I was confused and in shock, and a point came when I actually wasn't sure what I was doing. Other than my world fell apart, I was confused and in shock, and a point came when I actually wasn't sure what I was doing. It was that confusion which, according to Jenkins, caused him to other than my world fell apart, I was confused and in shock, and a point came when I actually wasn't sure what I was doing. It was that confusion which, according to Jenkins, caused him to repeatedly change his account of his movements just before Billy Joe's death. At first he said that on returning from the clarinet lesson, he never entered the house. Later he said he did enter the house and had waited in the hall. Then he told police he'd gone into the kitchen. Officers believed that he was lying to distance himself from the scene of the murder. When I'd found Billy, I was being interviewed with, within an hour. And uh, I, was, I was totally confused. And uh, I, 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 I gave a very general account. I didn't actually um, sign a witness statement. General notes were taken. And uh, it was, in fact, different. Could one explanation be because your memory was beginning to return or was it because you realized that the children were giving different accounts to the account that you gave and you had to keep mm. changing your story? But these were, if you like, private conversations, um, remarks that were made off the cuff at a time when I was in shock. When the police officer went in shock, he, he was given support. You've done a good job. This was a difficult situation, but we're here to support you. When I said that my world fell apart, guilty. We're, we're not interested in, 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 in issues of shock. Nine days after the murder, detectives made their arrest, and they soon discovered more about their suspect. Officers found his CV, in which Jenkins claimed to have been educated at Gordonston and the University of Kent. 
but that information was false. Jenkins had lied. Why did you lie in your CV? Because I wanted a job. I wanted a better job. We were living in a small house, um, had, uh, had five children, and I was having difficulty paying the mortgage. I um, applied for a number of jobs and wanted to be sure of getting an interview. And so I stupidly um, exaggerated my qualifications and experience. And uh, after a few years, um, it became an albatross around my neck and I, and I regretted doing it. Because you see how the police will use that yes. as evidence of a serious character flaw, that yes. you, you lied once about your CV. Why would you not lie about killing your daughter? Well, exactly. Sean Jenkins is untrustworthy. Untrustworthy. You can't trust a word he yeah. says. Exactly. A man of bad character. And suddenly, it was used as a powerful tool against me. The character evidence, the inconsistencies, and crucially the forensic, all helped the police to get the conviction they were looking for. In July 1998, Sean Jenkins was found guilty of murder. Deputy Head gets life for Billy Joe's murder. Blair's but Jenkins's lawyers immediately began plans for an appeal, and they came up with dramatic new evidence that would cast doubt on his conviction. The trial jury convicted Jenkins after hearing that he had Billy Joe's blood on his clothes. They believed he must have been the killer. Dad, Billy's been hurt! What's wrong? Over there. But new forensic experts now came forward with a different theory of how the blood could have got there. They said a dying or even dead person could expel microscopic droplets when moved or supported. This so-called blood aerosol theory suggested that Jenkins could have been sprayed with the incriminating evidence just by tending to Billy Joe. And it was revealed that she did have a blockage in her airway, which may have caused tiny droplets to be released through her nose. When forensic scientists are looking at impact spatter, that so often it can so easily be confused with expiration spray. And the, the forensic scientist who gave a provisional report, that's all it was, a few lines of a provisional report, and he said that it was consistent with Sean Jenkins being the attacker, but that there might well be another explanation. The new scientific theory was enough to force a retrial. But when that case ended in 2005, the new jury were unable to reach a verdict. In October last year, and with Jenkins now free on bail, there was a third trial. After three months of evidence, this jury was also unable to agree whether he was guilty or not. Finally, the judge brought the case to an end. He acquitted Jenkins, leaving him to walk free with his new wife, Tina. After so many years, of, uh, of fighting um, that I sat down just outside the court and uh, my solicitor came and said to me, Sean, it's finally over. But as the court case ended, the controversy began. It emerged that the jury had not been allowed to hear dramatic testimony from Jenkins's first wife, Lois. She described him as a violent man, a strict disciplinarian, who beat his children with a stick and a slipper and who had beaten her, inflicting serious injury. Your ex-wife published her story where she claimed that you physically abused her. Yes. How did you, how did you react to that? Um, I was disappointed. Was it true? No. No, it's not true at all. She was pretty detailed about it because, according to what she told the appeal court in 2004, mm. she said that you sort of slapped her around even before you were married and mm. then that after you had been married that you uh, hit her in such a way that it caused a perforated eardrum. It wasn't a, a, a perforated eardrum, it was because she caught an infection. But, uh, but no, the, the allegations that, uh, that Lois has made are not true. Allegations of physical abuse not true? Uh, just simply not true. But, uh, 
I think one has to look at, in, look at it in context. Um, I think Lois was in a vulnerable position. I think the police came to her and persuaded her that I was guilty of murder, but the police had a problem. Uh, they, they didn't have a motive. What the police needed was for me to be violent. Suddenly, within those initial days, um, allegations of violence um, against Lois were made. But this is an extraordinary thing for a wife to do, isn't it? To go along with the police yes. so that they could get a conviction against you. I don't think Lois actually knew and understood what she was doing. I think she was in a vulnerable position. But even now, following Jenkins's acquittal, his former wife stands by her claims. She's always insisted that theirs was a violent marriage. Do I understand you right in saying that you never hit your ex-wife? No, I, um, in, in all the allegations that, uh, that Lois has put um, with regard to uh, that I was a, a wife beater, that is, that, that is not true. You never hit her? No. Let me quote to you something that she said. She said she was very surprised at how volatile you were. She felt frightened. She said, again quoting, we never argued, he didn't shout, he would just lose it, snap, and in a few minutes he'd be back to normal. Do you recognize that description of yourself? Well, that, that, that isn't a description of me. But your, 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 your question was, are the allegations of domestic violence... I've never beaten my wife and state that emphatically. I have never beaten my wife and I've been a good husband and I've been a good father. She also said that you were a very strict disciplinarian with the children, that you hit them with a slipper or with a stick. Is that also untrue? It is untrue, yes. Um, the, the whole caricature has, uh, has been presented and certainly um, within those early uh, days, you know, the police wanted many things. They wanted me to be violent, but of course it wasn't good enough that, uh, f for me to be violent with my wife. It would have also been useful for them that I was violent with my children. So, no, this idea, this stereotype of the deputy head, headmaster, running around the house with a cane, caning his children, being oppressive, is, a, is an absolute caricature of the truth. Namely, that I have always loved supported, protected and encouraged my children. But since we filmed this interview, Jenkins's two youngest daughters, Esther and Maya, have given us a statement. They said, the comments our father made where he denied using corporal punishment against us are not true. It's now eight years since Sean Jenkins faced his first trial for Billy Joe's murder. Since then, he's lost his job and his first marriage and spent several years of his life in prison. And after facing up to questions about his own innocence, one other burning question remains. In your view, who killed your daughter? I don't know, but someone entered my home and murdered Billy. And you could never get over that? That will never go. That will always uh, remain with me. Sean Jenkins talking exclusively to The Tonight Programme. And that's all we have time for this evening. We're back on Friday evening at 8 o'clock. Until then, from all of us here, good night and thank you for joining us.